Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. alaikum. Today we're going to talk about setting posterior teeth. So after checking the quality for the upper and lower setting, we begin by the first step in adding posterior teeth. We are going to begin with tooth number six. Tooth number six, which is, which is the first molar, is the biggest tooth in the arch and its location is a bit to the mesial so it's in between the mid of the upper six and the distal of the five so after marking where its location should be we open a box for the tooth and then we set it into the location so the first step is putting the tooth in correct relation with the upper in terms of cusp interdigitation Once more, please observe your morphology. So the tooth is put into place. We check with the upper that the location is correct in terms of cusp interdigitation. And we just want to also point that once you're working with the upper and then go to the lower, make sure your wax is totally cold. So what are we doing now? We are raising the tooth in location to increase the interdigitation between the cusps of the upper and, and the lower. So within its setting, you will find that on the mesial, it's almost with the occlusal plane of the wax, but distally, it's following the six going up. Why? Because we had curve of speed. So after we put it into place, uh, and we put the cusps in location buckley and we make sure it's in location the mesial cusp of the lower is in between tooth number six and tooth number five the distal cusp is a bit less than the distal cusp of the upper molar so it's larger than mesial distally than the upper molar so it extends for a longer period After setting from the buccal side, now we're watching the tooth from the lingual side. And what we're trying to do is raise the tooth lingually so its cusps interdigitate and go up towards the palatal cusps of the upper. So that's the lingual interdigitation of tooth number six. So now that tooth number six is finished, we could go either to the back or to the front. Meaning that we can set tooth number four and five, or we could set tooth number seven. They're equally the same. And notice that now we, after we have set tooth number six, that the wax that we are removing now is some space for tooth number five. But before we have removed it, this, the upper premolar were, was touching on this wax. So each time before I remove any wax, make sure it's still touching. So tooth number five will interdigitate with upper tooth number five. So we put it into location, we open a box just enough for it. And once more, the upper cusp will go down so tooth number five is in between tooth number five and tooth number four. So it's in location now. We're trying to orient it, raise it to increase the interdigitation with the upper, tilt it from the buccal, and now we're going to tilt it from the lingual. The same we did with tooth number six. We are trying to raise the cusp of the lower five from the inside to embrace the upper cusp. So the interdigitation of both cusps are now best. And the orientation of the root is correct now, tooth number four. Now in the case that you're setting for patients, the selection of the size of the teeth is important that you set 
you select a size suitable for the patient. The tooth that usually sometimes or uh, that could have a problem while setting is tooth number four. After adding tooth number six and five from back and the canine from front, sometimes we don't have space for tooth number four, so it's the most common tooth that we trim to make it a bit narrower. So first we remove the wax for tooth number four. which is the lower premolar. And we try to put it, we find that it doesn't have any place. So to make the tooth fit, we're going to use a handpiece we're going to trim using the adjusting carbide there and we have adjusted the speed of the unit at 20. We don't want a high speed because we don't want the tooth falling off while you're trimming. So we take out the tooth. Where am I allowed to trim? I'm allowed to trim first. I begin trimming at the dis mesial and distal of the tooth. If I find that the morphology of the tooth is going to be ruined and I'm losing a lot of the marginal ridges, I could also remove from the mesial and distal of tooth number five, if I need. So I begin at first the mesial and distal of tooth number four from both sides, while still looking at the cruisal table that the marginal ridge is not reduced significantly. We have more, we have more than half of the marginal ridge. If I find that the cruisal table will be ruined and the tooth becomes abnormal in shape, we can also remove from tooth number five as well. So now we could also move from tooth number five mesially. And this will also give us extra space. Remember that when you remove, the uh, surface will be very straight. So make a roundation. So go slightly to the labial and slight, slightly to the lingual to reduce the straight shapes and make return back the tooth with curves. So it's not a straight cut onto the tooth surface. So go back and uh, make it round. And then we try to fit it in place. We're trying to... measure it, it's still not going in, so I could trim a bit more. How do you know it's a fit in place? Once we close the articulator, we want to make sure that now it's fit with the upper without any space between the posterior teeth. So it went into place, and we are trying to just orient the roots. Roots of the premolars of the lower are, are also upright as the, they were in the upper. So, look at tooth number six, there is no space. Tooth number five is in contact and with no space. So that makes sure that we have added the tooth in the correct position. And we slightly rotate it to meet the canine. So it meets the canine. In the lingual side, this depends on the morphology of your tooth set. Some teeth set come with lower four without any cusp. You remember that tooth number four in natural dentition, the lingual cusp is uh, underdeveloped. It's not like the uh, lower five. So if it's underdeveloped and you get the set where the premolar, first premolar is closer to the canine, we don't do a lingual adjustment. But if, you, if the uh, morphology of your teeth on your uh, set of teeth has a lingual cusp, we interdigitate it with the upper as we did with the second premolar. 
Now go back to tooth number seven. Tooth number seven will be following the curve that we have created, the curve of C in the upper. So we are trying to put place for it in the lower here. If you find that you don't have place for tooth number seven, once more you can trim it from the distance. But before trimming tooth number seven, let's go back to the sequence. Remove wax first, then reduce the base plate, and then reduce the tooth if it needs a reduction. So if the tooth is touching the base plate, let's follow the rules that we have done for uh, teeth that don't have space, and that is trimming from the wax first, and then trimming from the base plate, and then trimming from the tooth itself. Okay. Before closing, we just made sure that the upper wax, no wax is present extra, and now the tooth goes into contact with the upper seven, and once we finalize it, we go lingually and fit it into place. So, we finalize its tilt, we remove excess wax, we make sure it's interdigitating with the upper perfectly. If it's not, we just raise it from beneath. So I, I stab the knife beneath it, and we go lingually and watch what to do. We try to take the tooth up by raising the lingual cusps to embrace the upper. Okay? So the tooth totally is total with total contact with the upper seven. So we make sure the interdigitation, I could see no space between the teeth, and now also I don't see them buckling. So that's how we set lower posterior teeth into location, and we find that the lower posterior teeth, the central fossa of the lower posterior teeth are over, almost over or slightly lingual than the crest of the ridge. In our first design, we put the palatal cusps of the upper on the crest of the ridge, so the central fossa is where the palatal cusps of the upper lie, and they are straight in one line and with the central ridge line. What we're doing now is finalizing. Remember that sometimes while you're adding a tooth or two, the position of the teeth change, so always revise your position of the teeth while you're doing your work. Fix them into place securely with warm wax, fill in the interdental papilla areas. Add more wax if needed. Clean the teeth and submit them bilaterally. All teeth are present on both sides. Thank you.